Hi, my name is Luke. This is lectures on leadership, management and effective teams. So looking more at costs, we've got fixed costs, which is pay without regards to how much we can make. For example, staff, rent, electronic bills, uh, gas bills, whatever. And there's variable costs, which are relative and scale with how much we make in, for example, more raw materials. And there's contribution, which is when we're making more than what the variable costs cost but we're still making a loss. So if the price is too low the consumer might think it's poor quality but obviously if the price is too high a consumer won't buy it because they don't have the money. So how do we set a price? Uh, price normally equals the cost plus an asset margin and in retail it's around 30% on top of the company cost. Uh, value added so price is the value and then new price is the current price plus, plus the additional value. So here's an example. So we've got a face crime a face cream, face cream with an active ingredient that softens the skin, which is made by BASF and it contains two percent by weight percentage. Um, BASF, BASF, BASF sells up to us at twenty pounds per kilogram. Then we've got Crodo, who produces an active wrinkle, which is a new active ingredient, um, which has a weight percentage of two percent, and this costs seven pounds per kilogram to manufacture. The company which we're imposing to be, which is Boots, believe we can get, um, we can sell for £1 more than the current sale price by adding Crowder's ingredient instead of BASF's. What would be an acceptable selling price for Crowder for £1 per kilogram? So the additional value that Boots are getting is £1. The current cost of the active in formulation is £20 um, pounds at 2% weight percentage, which is 40p per kilogram. The new price is the current price plus the additional value, which means Boots, which is us, could tolerate a cost of £1.40 per kilogram in the formulation, which gives us no additional margin, so no incentive to change suppliers. And this is because we're selling for one pound per kilogram, so it's not too much. It's not much. If Croda and Boots um, share the additional value equally, it means that we can make an additional 50p per kilogram, which is 50% of the pound that they'll be offering extra. But that means we could then tolerate a cost of 90p per kilogram in the formulation, which is one pound over two, which means we'd only be paying 50p plus the 40p, which means that'd be 90p, because that'd be the extra money that we'd be getting to. Um, so we have calculated within the formulation, but now we need to calculate the bulk price Crowder would charge for the new active itself in bulk. So in formulation, the price of relatives equals 90p per kilogram, which contains 2% weight percentage. Um, so the bulk cost would be 90p divided by 2% times 100, which is 45 kilograms, 45 pounds per kilogram. So Crowder's margin would be 45 minus the 7 pound that costs them to make it price minus cost and then doing the um, 38 over 45 times 100 which is 84.4 percent that's the percentage margin so then we're going to move on to teams and management and leadership so teams it's important to bring together resources and people to deliver products so the team is very important in the business so one person doesn't have the skills or ideas to deliver the goals efficiently and a group of individuals who don't interact effectively won't be a successful team teams want to have a common purpose, complementary skills, clear roles, effective and open communication, all involved and motivated, cooperation, so work to people's strengths and weaknesses, and support, respect, and trust each other in the business with, a pro with an appropriate leader. So moving on to management. Management is how do we get there, essentially organising a set of resources to achieve a goal, whereas the leadership is where, um, where we want to go, essentially. That means bringing people together, bringing a group of individuals together to achieve a common purpose. There's five types of leadership. There's laissez-faire, which is let everyone just get on and do whatever. There's bureaucratic, which is setting some rules that are applied, which is right or wrong, which is good for healthcare. There's autocratic, which is no debate, just do it, which is good for an emergency. There's democratic, which includes debates and votes. There's transformational which is just in the background helping and supporting whenever needs to be. 
So there's the John Adair model for leadership, as poorly drawn as it is, but there you need to consider the three other things, team, task, and individual. So the task would be to define a task, devise a plan, brief members of their goals and roles, delegate work to team members, allocate resources, check the quality, control pace, keep a plan and evaluate the progress. The team will have to set standards, they'll have to define roles and responsibilities, maintain a discipline and moral, morale, um, build team spirit, motivate, open communication, recruit or train in appropriate skills and obviously maybe delegate some sub-team leaders. And then for the individual, we want to involve all the team members, feel like they're um, achieving something, make sure they're proud of what they're doing, getting a good reward. Um, seek out an individual's abilities, which means work to their abilities. Bring in the quieter members who might have something really good to offer but not confident in bringing it out. Uh, praise and support or encourage these people uh, who want to feel like they're being valued and achieving. Obviously, with the praise or rewards, they'll feel that way. And then empower individuals, um, and as a as a leader, potentially just stay clear, and just help when need be. So we've got one more uh, lecture to go. This is introduction to the chemistry used in industries, and then we're done.